Hey, what's up? It's Kramer Ammons. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. I like to make bows, and from that I made an archery company where we sell archery gear, Shatterproof Archery. Check that out if you're interested. But this video is not about that. This video is about making bows, and specifically overlooked items, or maybe you could say a pre-tiller checklist. If you're making your own bow, these are things that can cause people headache and problems after helping hundreds of people make bows and making hundreds myself. This is a few things I've learned. So this is, I think, the 11th video in a about a 15-part series of a tillering course that was once exclusive but is now free to everyone. So I made this course last year, but now I want to give it to you. So please enjoy. I'll see you on the inside. I hope you're as excited as I am about starting to tiller here. We're gonna cover the pre-tiller checklist and now I'm gonna start tillering this bow soon for the case study just to show you how I would tiller a reflex deflex bow. But first, let's jump into our pre-tiller checklist. I always like to leave the handle square if I can when I'm going to tiller a bow because that allows it to easily sit in the tillering tree or the tillering board. And secondly, if you spend an hour and a half to shape the handle how you like it before tillering, I need to be a pessimist, but what happens when the bow breaks? Now you can't use it. So I like to go ahead and tiller first and then shape the handle. When you go to tiller, you wanna make sure that the bow sits level. If it's tilted up at all, it's gonna look uneven. And for this wall right here, I've got these lines on it that are a really good reference to use while tillering. But in order to use the lines when referencing, I need to make sure that this bow is even with the lines right now. So as it bends, I can use that as reference. But let's say it's off like that, then now I can no longer use the lines out of as a reference. And if I do, then I'm just screwing up the tiller the whole time. So make sure your bow fits. And even if you've already shaped the handle, you can use some foam or a towel or something, uh, carve the wood, whatever you need to do to make sure that the bow is sitting level in your tillering stick or tillering tree before you start tillering. Before you start tillering, you're gonna wanna figure out where to pull the string down because I could put this on the tillering tree and move it side to side. The important thing is that where my pulley is or where I connect it on my tillering stick is where my fingers are gonna be when I shoot. And that's even gonna adjust depending on if you shoot three under or split finger. So you wanna pull it right where you're going to shoot. How I like to do this on a bow is to find the very center of the handle and then I'm gonna move up an inch to an inch and a half and that's where the arrow rest is gonna go. And so I know on mine, I'm gonna be going three under right below it. So basically for me, it's pretty close to the center. But if you're gonna do split finger, you're gonna wanna come up just a little bit. So just get within an inch when you start off. And then once the bow's strong, you can use a bow square like this to find out where your knock is gonna go or close to it. And then you can figure out exactly where you're gonna pull. And then put your pulley right where the middle finger is going to pull on your string, and that'll give you as close to a perfect tiller as you can get. But imagine, let's say you hook your pulley right here in the middle of the bow, and you pull back. Well, <laughs> that's lower than my bottom finger. I'm actually gonna be pulling right there when I shoot the bow. So that's gonna change your tiller slightly. So you wanna make sure that pulley or that tillering stick is right where you're gonna pull. That's important to make a consistent even tiller. And if you're going over to your tilling tree or tillering stick, and one time putting it here, the next time putting it here, the next time putting it here, and you're like, why is my tiller not very good? Why is it changing so much? That could be the reason. So keep that in mind, to pull right where your fingers are gonna go on the bow. And if you have any question or doubt on that, just start in the middle, and then once you establish the top limb, get a string on it, and slightly move it over. It won't change the tiller a lot, but as you're getting close, you really wanna be consistent. It's super important to know your poundage. So there's a couple ways to do it. One way is just with a little scale like this, or you could use a fishing scale. And from there, you can pull it to find your poundage. Or you can connect a scale like this 
or a kitchen scale, a fishing scale. There's a bunch of different versions you can get for under $10. You can put it on your tillering tree, and as you're pulling down, you can see that scale adjust. For that purpose, I prefer not a digital one, but one that has a dial on it because it gives you quicker feedback. So as you're pulling, you see the dial move. Rather on this one, you'll have to pull it down and then hold it for a second before it shows you the digital reading. That's at least on this cheap one. The other way to do this is to put your tillering stick, put the bottom of it on a scale, I will demonstrate here with a shipping scale, but this is how you would do it with just your normal scale in any regular house. Put your bow in the tillering stick and then push the string down. As you're pushing the string down, you're putting the weight of the poundage of the bow through the tillering stick onto the scale and you can get your poundage reading there. You'll just wanna account for the weight of your tillering stick so that that's not included in your poundage. So you can zero out your scale with it on or just weigh it first, know that it's two pounds or whatever it is and then minus that from your finished reading. If you do the floor scale method, what I would do, put your tillering stick on the floor, find out the weight and then you're like, okay, I know at 14 inches, that's my max. Exercise the limb to 14 inches, pull it to 14 inches, tiller it at 14 inches after you remove wood, then you can go back to the scale and be like, okay, now my poundage is at 15 inches, my desired poundage is at 15 inches, so now I can tiller at 15 inches, and you keep working your way up until you get to the finished amount. But you do wanna check quite often, that way you stay on track.